So, Sonic Mania is out, and spoiler alert, I don't like it very much. So, let me start off by saying who this review is not for. This review is not for the people who grew up playing the original Sonic games back on the Genesis, or really anyone who considers themselves an existing fan of Retro 2D Sonic. If nostalgia is what's driving you to play this game, then you'll enjoy it whatever its faults, and didn't even need to watch this video in the first place because you probably already own it. Now, this review is for the people who want to know if the game itself is actually any good, and as I already spoiled, I would say it's not. So let's do the usual YouTube reviewer thing and get the positives out of the way first. The game is pretty as hell and has fantastic music, and I admit, for some people, those elements are so exemplary that they might be worth the price of admission alone. But I care about the gameplay in my games, which is where Sonic Mania trips and falls. So, the things that I don't like list is as follows. Number one, the game has a live system, a vestigial relic of coin-operated arcade machines that's only purpose these days is to annoy you. Number two, instant kill crush deaths are bullshit and only serve to make the live system that much more frustrating. Number three, the completely arbitrary 10 minute time limit is bullshit. Now, if Sonic was all about speed and getting to the end as quick as possible, that'd be fine, but despite its claims to the contrary, the actual gameplay of these games is a lot slower paced most of the time, generally consisting of explory bits and puzzles, none of which are helped by the constant looming presence of a timer. But the cherry on top of the custard pie being thrown at your face here is that the timer is pointless too! Because when you die by going over time, you're only sent back to the last checkpoint, not the start of the level, and the timer is just reset to zero from there. So that means the timer isn't something you ever pay attention to, because the punishment for failing amounts to an inconvenience, so its only purpose is to occasionally kill you for no reason. You could literally replace the timer with just occasional random death, and it would be functionally identical. Except, because of the limited live system, sometimes that minor inconvenience gets upgraded to a controller-throwing, hair-pulling rage quit. Now, all of these things mentioned so far are annoyances, but none of them would have been deal-breakers for me. Now, the big thing that really sours my opinion towards the game is that I think the main gameplay of the 2D Sonics is inherently flawed. As I touched on before, Sonic has this reputation as a fast game, you know, gotta go fast, bada bada, gotta go fast, bada bada. But the only place where that ever really happens is in the scripted segments where they don't put endless bullshit in your path and allow Sonic to speed up for more than two seconds at a time. But those are just set pieces, and they really only amount to holding left for a few seconds before going back to the main, much slower and more methodical gameplay, which is annoying to me. Now, the game wants you to explore, as evidenced by the fact there are multiple paths through each level, but I wouldn't really call that exploring, especially when you hit points of no return every two feet. All that these huge levels really amount to in the end is a series of tunnels that funnel you into one of two or three directions. It's not like a Metroidvania like Hollow Knight, where you can actually explore the environment and become familiar with it. It's more like you take whichever path is the most obvious and then go down that one until you reach an ending or a wall. And on top of that, the game just isn't fun to explore. Like, I don't know if it's fair to blame Sonic Mania for this or not, but every single piece of Sonic media that I have ever seen has conditioned me to the idea that the games are about speed. So every time a running set piece finishes and the game goes, okay, time to slow down, and methodically get through this puzzle. I start frothing at the mouth like a rabid dog and wildly mashing the controller while chanting, gotta go faster, 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 go, 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 go. Ah! It's not fun. But even the speedy segments in the game have issues. Like, here's a question. You go into this loop holding right, but then you're upside down. Now, do you need to keep holding right or start holding left? Who knows? I don't. But what I do know is that regardless of which choice I picked, Sonic always ended up screeching to a halt and making me fall. Or how it's impossible to see enemies coming when going at even a moderate speed. 
And for that matter, determining what does and doesn't hurt you is always a fun game to play. Like, oh look, here's a giant robot spider boss fight that practically spells out death for you. Better stay away from that, right? No, you can actually go up and rub your face in it. Doesn't hurt you. But God help you if you ever get squished by a moving box. But here's the thing. Despite all of these problems holding the gameplay back, it's still way too easy. Unless you plan on speedrunning the game, the most skill you will ever need is the ability to hold right and jump whenever you hit a wall or an enemy, and then go back to holding right. And the fact that you're invincible as long as you have at least one ring means that anything that isn't a boss fight barely requires you to be awake. You can just run through the level at top speed, getting hit every two feet, grabbing one of your rings, and running forward again as you continue to tank hit after hit after hit. Now, the main argument I know that I'm going to hear in defense of my criticisms is that they're being faithful to the originals. And I would agree. You could take all my criticisms for Sonic Mania and apply them equally well to the original games. And that leads us on to a whole other discussion of whether or not Sonic Mania should have tried to fix the flaws of the original, considering the whole point of the game was just to be more of the original Sonic game. I mean, on one hand, I can kind of admire the commitment to being faithful to the originals, but on the other hand, that just means the problems of those games are still problems now. And I'm not going to give shitty mechanics a pass just because, well, that's how it always was, because that attitude is inherently anti-progress, and leads to shitty traditions that will be better left forgotten, like bleeding that cure diseases or family gatherings or whatever. Of course, I imagine the devs were trying to stay as close as possible to the original games for fear that the game might pick up some of the bad habits that modern Sonic has from trying to evolve. But removing tiny annoyances like the live systems and time limit isn't going to suddenly transform the game into Sonic 06 behind our backs. I mean, look at Shovel Knight. That was a game that successfully took concepts from old games and brought them up to date while keeping the good and getting rid of the bad. It is possible to do that while keeping the original spirit of the game intact. Now, I'm not saying those tiny changes would have made the game perfect, because as I've discussed, I think the main gameplay of the 2D Sonics is just inherently flawed, but it would have helped if nothing else. So, so far as I'm concerned, Retro 2D Sonic is part of a bygone age, where most kids only had one or two games, and where something like Sonic 1 and Sonic 2 were 10 out of 10s by virtue of just existing. But in hashtag current year, without significant improvements to how the core gameplay works, for me at least, it'll always fall at the first hurdle. And yes, that was the best running pun I could think of to end on. Special thanks to my wonderful Patreon patrons, Tao Bob, Renataja, Soul, Mythnut, Isaiah Christo, Magiline, Ludwig, Calvin Ryman, Sawsbucky, Forgotten Paladin, and Joe Anderson. 